Hey everybody, Alberto here, back with another video for you guys. This time we're in Tennessee at the McLaughlin Boatworks factory, taking a look at how an opt is made. McLaughlin Boatworks has been building boats for over 50 years, but they're primarily known for their opti, which they've been building since the 1990s, ever since the class went one design. So sit back, relax, and join me as we take a look at how an opti is made. <laughs> Tennessee, home to beautiful mountain scenery, Nashville, bald eagles, loud music, and opties. Yes, opties. Just outside Chattanooga, McLaughlin Boatworks has been building opties for the last 25 years. So why don't we go talk to our friend Spencer and see how they're made. My name is Spencer Wyberly. I'm vice president of McLaughlin Boatworks. I'm an honest guy. I'm a boat builder. I'm not here to sell the Kool-Aid. I have my thoughts and my ideas, but I'm showing people out there, the kids out there, what's going on behind the curtains and the amount of effort that goes into it. But I think by doing that, it's to give the sailors and the parents a better understanding of everything that's going on behind the scenes. Opti is, is a really difficult boat. It goes a lot to say that we're the only builder in North America. <laughs> There's a lot of people that have tried. We've been building boats for a really long time. <laughs> 50 years, I think. And it goes back to some guys in San Diego that came over here when the lakes got dammed in Chattanooga. And we started with snipes, and we built snipes, and then for the thistle, and then eventually came the Opti. The story that Steve told me, who's the owner, is that a bunch of parents from St. Pete approached him about becoming a builder because at the point, at that point, they were just bringing in imports, and they didn't, they knew the class wouldn't survive on importing boats alone, and that was pre IOD 95, and we've been building boats ever since. It's just a really busy build. There's just so much going on. Yeah. Every part and every aspect of the boat requires some type of attention. It's not something that you could get a robot to do because composites don't like to bend 90 degrees or close to 90 degrees. Anywhere you see a sharp turn in fiberglass it makes it yeah. difficult. When you look at most modern boats and the curves that are on the boats, you'll find that they don't all, most of them don't have very sharp turns. First step is to prep your molds. Then after you prep your molds, you take them into the spray booth and you're gonna put your gel coat on first. We use white gel coat and then we put black gel coat behind it so that the laminators can see the air bubbles. So when you think of paint drying, gel coat catalyzes. It's a, it's a two-part polyester base. It's different than laminating resin because it's got the UV inhibitors in it. It doesn't have a structural bearing to it, but depending on how thick you spray it, helps with the finish. So you let the gel coat kick off where it's gone from a liquid, like a paint, to it's somewhat solid. We let it kick off and then we bring it into our lamination stations and that's when we start laying up our parts. The boat's built with three sets of tooling. You got a hole mold, a deck mold, and a midship frame. So when you when you lay up any part, you put your skin layer on first. That's usually a mat. That's the easiest glass to work with. It conforms to really sharp turns, provides really good adhesion to your gel coat, which minimizes air bubbles. Well, you don't want any air bubbles in there for a couple of reasons. If it's a single ply laminate, like most of the Opti, if you have an air bubble under the gel coat, as we just said, the gel coat doesn't have any structural strength to it. The hull with the Opti it's got a sandwich composite on the floor, so there's foam in the bottom. A lot of kids will ask me, can I get a clear floor to the boat? You can't, because there's foam down there. Foam acts as a spacer for the cockpit floor and the ultimate bottom of the boat, and that spacing is what gives it rigidity so that the boat doesn't flex and bend and twist as it goes through the waves. On the sides of the boat, it's a single ply laminate, and our fibers are cut on a 
on a 45 axis so that they resist the torque of the boat and the forces against the midship frame and the mass partner, the sail. You get a stiff boat that can absorb energy and can release energy as you need it and it makes a fast boat. So we've built our three parts, hull, we got our deck, we got our midship, all right, they all come out of the molds. Then we take them into the grinding room and shape the parts so that they can eventually be assembled. Then we go into assembly where those parts are all put together through advanced adhesives. That gives us the fiberglass shell of the boat. From there, we, we add the gudgeons, we add the blocks, the mast steps already installed, the non-skids put on, then it is presented for measurement. Every Opti in every factory in the world has to measure their boats before they leave the factory. That's a class requirement. And that's done by the national authority. Our measures are USODA measurers, and they come in with their own jigs and their own tools, and they measure the boats. They eventually get fully rigged out and cataloged serial numbered, the measurement books get scanned, and then hopefully they go off to their home. Or they go into stock and we use them for the charters like North Americans. We have a philosophy that if you build the corner strong and you use the highest grade resins, you use the highest grade raw materials, you're gonna get an end result that's gonna win races. It's also gonna be a boat that if you take care of it, will last the career of your Opti Sailor. And that is also something that's paramount to this class, is that the forefathers or engineers, if you will, designed a boat for kids that could go through being able to learn how to sail with and if taken care of, can also take the sailor all the way through to their Grand Prix racing. I couldn't have said it better myself. Although I've seen other boats being built, it was very interesting to see the challenges that go into building just one Optimus. And I'd like to think that those of you that have watched this video will appreciate just what goes into getting you out on the water. As they say, it takes a village, and when it comes to boat building, it definitely does. Well, that about wraps up this video. I want to give a special thank you to Spencer Wyberly over at McLaughlin Boatwork for letting us take a look at their boat factory and their process. Both Spencer and I agree that giving you guys a behind the scenes look at what goes on to make your opti sailing possible only helps you be a better sailor and understand sailing that much better. So I hope you guys enjoyed. This has been Alberto. See you next time.